<laughs> I can see your future. Like you think traffic jams on the motorway get bad. At least people aren't trying to drive over your car to get one position ahead of you. Yeah, wee, look at it rip. Do it for the gram. Wait, wait, don't film. Okay. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome back to another episode and uh, welcome to Not My Truck Camper. Uh, I am actually in a Lance Camper and when I show you what this looks like from the outside, you won't believe it because when I'm in here, I genuinely feel like I'm in an RV. As you just saw from out the window, we are here in the middle of the desert and that is because I am at King of the Hammers 2024, which is an epic off-road event that spans two weeks and basically they turn Johnson Valley, which is this area that I'm in, into a city with hundreds of thousands of people. And if you come back here next week, everyone will be gone and it will be back to just being empty desert. It is wild just how many people show up to this. And honestly, I think you're gonna see why. I came last year, I did one night camping and I had such a great time. And I said, I need to come back in 2024 and do it even bigger and better. So we have this as our base camp. I have Starlink outside, thanks to my friend Brandon. And we have this to get around in. That right there is a brand new Can-Am X3 Turbo R. So yesterday I drove up here, I had to go and pick this up from Lance and then I had to go and pick the Can-Am up actually from the guys from Jetski to Catalina. They actually have a new thing going on where not only will they take you to Catalina on sea -Dews, but now they will also bring you out to the desert and do some crazy desert adventures in these Can-Am side-by-sides. But yesterday I drove all day through the craziest weather. It rained more than I've ever seen it rain here in the US since I've lived here. And so I finally got here late last night, set up camp in the dark so I didn't realize just how gorgeous it was honestly where we were and then I just went and cruised around in the Can-Am kind of checking out the local spots I went to the crowd pleasers like Chocolate Thunder and Backdoor which are two of the obstacles here what King of the Hammers is later on in the video but the best way for me to summarize my intention of being here is kind of like when your girlfriend wants to watch a football game because she just wants to see the nice men's legs that's kind of how I am but with off-road vehicles so I don't know who's racing I don't know the classes I don't know any of that all I know is that we are in the middle of the desert there is a full-blown town that has popped up here and there are some of the most wild cars you've ever seen in your life. And over the next couple of days, I'll be exploring and bringing you along with me to show you the madness that happens at King of the Hammers. But first, I want to eat my egg toasty because I'm starving. Uh, the wind is howling. Look at the flag on the can -am. It's getting wild. So yeah, I have literally spent my morning sitting here, having a cup of tea and just, you know, enjoying looking out and looking at the desert. Um, like I said, we'll do a full tour later, but this is the camper, so this was my bed last night. Super comfy. Uh, I haven't made it, so excuse the mess. But look, you've got like cupboards here. There's a wardrobe over there. Nice double windows. And then you've got the skylight. I mean, honestly, it's, it's a queen bed. It was so comfy. Um, but now I am going to go jump in the shower, which is in here. Look, full size shower, which would be very nice. So I'll be back when I'm not naked. And I'm a clean boy. Wow, it is a treat to have a proper shower in a camper. I, I'm being very spoiled, I'm not gonna lie. I really like this. Don't get me wrong, I love my truck. I love the simplicity of it. It's perfect. It's everything I need and nothing I don't. 
But sometimes some of the things that you don't need are actually quite nice too, like, you know, a shower and a big old stove and a nice deep sink. And anyway, we have got to go and meet Chris, who is actually the guy that built my truck camper for me, the guy that built the uh, slide outs and stuff. He's just showed up. So we've got to head down to the 40, which is the other side of King of the Hammers and uh, go and meet up with him so that he can get all set up. So let's hop in the Can-Am and go and send it. Alrighty, let's go. Holy crap, the wind! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> I was having a nice hot shower. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, damn. Yep. Isn't it crazy though that you can get into something like this for 30 grand? Yeah. You've probably got that in suspension on that I thing. But you can drive it around the street. Well, you can in Arizona with this one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, damn. Look at this thing. Old step yeah, side. Like F100. I don't know what year this would be from. This is sick, though. From what we understand, talking to us uh, people more than that. Had, uh, oh, it wouldn't be King of the Hammers without somebody walking through the desert, Tom. There it is. Special thank you to the They helped us on the pass and we miss them. Wait, wait, don't film. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Chocolate Thunder. Alrighty, back at base camp. Gonna make myself some food. I don't know if you can hear from my voice, but I think having this cold that I got in New York, 
plus uh, being out here in the desert where it's super windy and lots of dust, my voice is getting very, very bad. Oh yeah, I got some, should we do a little salad? Some chicky pieces? That might be nice. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do like a chicky salad. Got some little carrots and hummus while we're at it. Lovely. There we go there is my little well not so little started off little ended up being a hoofing great big full salad but looks bomb get in my belly all right somebody come outside and do wheelies or something okie dokie we are gonna go and meet my friend gabby who if you guys follow sort of motorsportsy people then you will probably know who she is. Uh, she is a Ford ambassador. She's got a Bronco. Apparently they're out here filming some stuff. So we're gonna go down to the dry lake bed and uh, go meet up with her. Go say hi. Before we go into, Cam go into Hammertown. I feel so much better after that food. I was definitely on a bit of a, a lull, but we're back to life. So uh, yeah, let's hop back in the Can-Am and get down there before the sun sets. Look how nice it looks out here. truck in reverse being chased by a Rivian being chased by a lifted Tesla crazy we found her I'm here here's Gabby <laughs> and here's the Bronco the, uh, she's mighty dirty right now but we had a lot of fun on the lake bed um, out in the desert today it was really windy but Overall, I know it was crazy. Time. Yeah, yeah. I I went out this morning and I was just getting sandblasted. Ugh. At least you got a windscreen. I right, know. At least I have That's a windshield. Nice. I was yeah. like, I don't want to get out of the car. Like, uh, uh. So but yeah, the sun is just going down here over Hammertown, and uh, I'm gonna go inside and check out Bronco Nation. Yep, so Bronco is? Nation. Uh, so it's actually a club, and they work alongside Ford. And if you own a Bronco, you can be a part of the Bronco Nation. And so they have like catering, a whole camp set up dedicated for just Bronco owners here. Um, which is pretty rad. So if you're somebody who knew in the off-roading community or have a Bronco, it's a ready-made community for you. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so it's, it's nice. kind of cool. So the town that I grew up in, the total population, I think, was 26,000 people. And I think here there's something like 150,000. Yeah, like over 100,000. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Oh, yeah, this wind is no joke. Yeah, we were at the top of, um, we did Bronco Knoll, which is actually where they did a lot of testing for the Ford Bronco. Oh yeah. And it was, I think the toppest part of jo uh, Johnson Valley, like elevation wise. It was you so said bad. The, the toppest part? The top, the highest. It was the toppest the, part, everybody. Yeah, the highest point, <laughs> the highest point. It's been a long day. <laughs> How good is that in the dark? I mean, not very. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't really, I, can't really see much, but no. um, here, let me let me get some auxiliary light in here. Oh. Oh, I can't bend my wrist the right way. There you go. Look, see, here's Gabby, <laughs> here's me. 
So anyway, we're gonna go rip the can am around. Uh, it's been a while since Gabby's been in one, so we're just gonna go send it, see what trouble we can get into, and uh, hopefully. What do you mean, hopefully? Hopefully. What? I want you to hold this. Oh, we're holding this now. And hopefully you can hold on to on? that GoPro for me. Oh, yep. <laughs> they can see your future. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not going through that. What is all that? Yeah, I'm not trying to go through that water, thank yeah, you. So many people got stuck. Good morning guys, uh, it is 6.15am, um, I don't know what I want to say. <sighs> Man, it's early. Morning guys, it's um, it's early, it is 20 past 6, I got up at 6, just started to get my brekkie on and uh, the sun is just about trying to peek out over the top of the mountains. Last night was super mellow, me and Gabby just went and drove around for a little bit, she hadn't been in the Can-Am for a while so I took her for a little desert rip and then I got to bed pretty early. This cold that I've got, although it's not stopping me from doing things, it's definitely not great. I just feel a bit bleh. So got to bed, tried to get some sleep in and uh, yeah, up early this morning because I'm actually going to go and join up with those Bronco ambassadors and we're going to go and chase the race. So we're going to drive out to different points around the track and uh, watch the trucks and all the crazy vehicles come by. Uh, today is the final day of the race. So this is the uh, big finale. So it should be good. We should see some pretty gnarly stuff. I've got some brachy on the go here. So I have to go meet them in about <clears throat> 45 minutes. So let's have a bloody good day here at King of the Hammers. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh. There you go, look at that, a little egg sarnie and uh, a little bagel there. Beautiful. I'll tell you what, I have really enjoyed staying in this camper. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a bit much, you know, like a bit a bit too bougie, if I'd miss the simplicity of my truck, and there's definitely a time and a place for both of them, like, I wouldn't take this one with me all the time. This is nice when you want to set up a base camp and sort of operate out of this area. My truck camp is great because it means that I can go anywhere and then I can sleep and cook instantly. There's no setup, it is there, everything's where I need it to be, and yeah, it's sort of like the minimal footprint. But on mornings like this where if I was in my truck, I would have had to have woken up, I would have had to have been outside, it's still a little bit chilly, uh, what is it? Yeah, it's only 40 degrees outside, and I would have been cooking out there, and that's fine, obviously, you can wear lots of clothes, but this is nice just for mornings like this. I think, it, honestly, it's probably because I'm not feeling 100%. It's just very much appreciated to be able to like make some breakfast, be in the warm, have the heater running, you know, sit down, have a nice hot cup of tea, watch the sun come up. It's just very pleasant. <laughs> and when you go camping with a sort of more minimalist setup, like this guy next to me has a go fast camper with a pop-up tent. You know, that's, that's essentially the same setup as mine, apart from he's sleeping on top of his rather than in it. I'm just very grateful for having this on this trip. It's been the perfect way to do it. And having the Can-Am has been awesome. Yeah, if you have a spare $83,000, then you can also have one of these. Two thumbs up for the Lance Camper, and uh, I'm gonna get into the rest of this brekkie before we hop into that Can-Am. What's up? Good morning. 
morning. How is everybody? Good. 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 The British Good. accent. Good. Okie dokie. We're here at Bronco Nation and I'm in a Can-Am, which is fine. Tons of Broncos here. They even got the uh, sick Bronco camera car there. So we're just going to go cruise around the desert, go and try and find these races and uh, have a gas or, I mean, I'll cruise on a half tank. Have a jolly good time. And Gabby's, okay. Gabby's only got half tank gas, so. It's a beautiful morning and my voice is screwed. And it's a beautiful morning and do 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 do. Put my little gloveys on. Oh, this is one of the new Maverick cars. Come check out the front suspension on this. So they just completely redesigned the front end on these. Oh, this is the new one. Yeah, and it has this wild, like, look at that. Whoa. It's like a tarantula. I know, it's crazy. When you see these things off road, they are unbelievable. Pretty, uh. That's so sick. Yeah. Oh, hi. I have my good friend Adam joining me. Say it's me. Hi. hi. <laughs> I'm trying to be as weird as you are on camera. Oh, hey, what are you trying I, to say? We try to say. You used to think you're weird on camera. Do you like sticky tongue? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the regular price was like 30 or 40 bucks. And these ones. That was traumatizing. <laughs> so we're... Yeah. You, you go, you're, are you taking me? over? Yep, Who's this doing is it? now your video. My, my video? All right. So we're here at Turkey Claw, which is this obstacle down here. So the cars are going to come up this gully, through there, around the corner, up and over those rocks, and off to freedom. And apparently, this is one of the most treacherous parts of the course. One of the races that finished yesterday didn't have to winch anywhere except for right here. There's a big old rock down there that apparently they all get caught on. And then up here they try and pass, and there's been rollovers and all kinds of stuff. Who knows what we'll see, but we're about to find out. He did that way better than I did, so. <laughs> so what's your uh, first thoughts of King of the Hammers then? It's hammer-tastic. <laughs>
this is nuts. So a couple of people just flipped. And because of that, there's been this huge traffic jam. No one's getting anywhere, but these guys are literally trying to like drive over each other in line. <laughs> like you think traffic jams on the motorway get bad. At least people aren't trying to drive over your car to get one position ahead of you. Well, that is uh, turkey claw done. So we're gonna head down the hill and go to the next spot. This is sick. I've never been out to this part of the desert before. And the trails are just perfect for side-by-sides. A little bit dusty. There goes Gabby. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, that was almost disaster. Right yeah. No way, did you beep it? No, I just saw it right there. So the GoPro fell out while I was trying to do some donuts through the sand. And then everybody else has been doing donuts. So I was like, oh, that thing's gone. It's got my whole episode on it. It's pretty cool we get to do this for our jobs, isn't it? Right, yeah. I always am like just grateful that I get to come do this with really rad people. <laughs> yeah, just another day at work. Yeah, just a bunch of shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, I am mighty impressed with these Broncos. I'm so impressed. Like, it goes up Hell's Revenge, no problem. I think that's the rest of our Bronco group, by the way. Oh, you yeah, yeah. You see them all? <laughs> the big old trail of them over there. Yeah, yeah the Broncos are rad. They just take a beating yeah they really do and is yours stock mostly like, yeah suspension and everything yep wow are these uh, standard size tires 
So you can get one with a Sasquatch package, which comes with 35s, okay. um, which are the same size as this. Yeah. Um, but this wasn't a Sasquatch. It wasn't, but I added the wheels and tires, so it's yeah. like it has a Sasquatch okay. package. Yeah. And then you did these fenders too, right? Yep. Yeah, it looks great. Thank you. I like your perfect grocery getter, hanging out, overlanding, off-roading, and donut doer. <laughs> <laughs> and so what's the difference between this one and like the Raptor? Oh, the Raptor is a three-point liter, bigger engine, bigger suspension. It's like eight inches total wider. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's track width and length. It's, it's just... Oh, okay. Yeah. There are so many picturesque spots out here. I mean, look at where we are. We just came up and over the trail. And we're now at the very top overlooking the desert section of the racetrack. And I can hear all of the cars That's down so here. so much better. I hey. feel like I lost like five pounds of fluids. <laughs> Gabby just went for a wee behind a rock. She's feeling much better about herself. So if you look all the way down there, there's a little race car. And so they're coming through here behind this rock and then the race goes out there. So the cool thing about the race today, all of the trucks, they're all unlimited, which means you can do whatever you want. Like, as long as you can dream it, you can do it. And so these things are the top of the top. And what's wild about King of the Hammers is you saw that section that they were all like trying to rock crawl through. Well, the same cars then have to get through these desert stages. So you sort of have to build a car that'll do it all. Because if it's just good for the desert, you won't make it through the rocks. And if it's just good through the rocks, you'll be slow for the desert. So you kind of have to build something that sort of does everything. Look how sick this is. So at the next stop, we're going to talk to the guys and get a little tour of this. All right, so picture this. This, so the Maverick X3, four seater, but roof rack, rooftop tent, spare tire, cooler, baggage, maybe delete the rear seats and turn this into a bench so I can put more stuff back here and turn it into the ultimate overland side by side. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think we should do that? this first and then uh, if you can maybe also I'll do a couple of runs. Let's go. Cool, I didn't see it. <laughs> All right, do it for the gram. How'd that feel? So much fun. Yeah. Because I've been on a roller coaster. That was what it's pretty pitched too. Yeah. It, it feels oh just burped in my helmet. It feels very <laughs> stable. <laughs> That's how excited I am. <laughs> Coming in this way is cool because you kind of like jump into it. Like uh -huh. there's a little hump right here. Right here. So you hit it and it compresses, you jump in, and then it's just like bah, bah, bah. What speed are you hitting it at? I didn't look. I would like to know so I can hit it. I'll uh I'll have a look and let you know. Nothing better than playing in the desert. 35 should do the trick. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Cool. Not too scary. No, just scary enough to keep it interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much fun. Thank you. You're very welcome. Just up here on the top of this little sand dune area, having a little chill. 
they're playing on this berm down here that I was riding earlier. What an amazing place though. It's the loudest quad I've ever heard. See, so yeah, I've never actually been out to this side of the desert. Everything uh, King of the Hammers wise is the other side of these mountains. So this is all new territory to me and it's awesome. I just love how much space and freedom there is out here. Well, there goes Gabby. Little jump. So let's take a moment to discuss the Can-Am Maverick DS Turbo RR. I think there's an X3 in there somewhere as well. Uh, what a piece of kit. I mean, I just cannot get over how amazing this thing rides out of the box. I mean, this is bone stock. There is not a single modification made to this. And you've seen the stuff that we've been riding. I mean, it has not faltered at all. And with these, the faster you go, the better they ride. So if it starts to get a bit bumpy and you get up to 30, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour, it just kind of like magic carpet glides over the top of the bumps. I mean, it's truly amazing. Obviously, it's got some pretty beefy suspension, you can see here. Um, and I'm not sure of the exact uh, specs of these. I know that you can get like a completely tricked out one. And I don't know if that comes with different shocks to this, but even in this form, which I believe is the base model, it's phenomenal. And I honestly have had so much fun riding it. Now, the cool thing about these as well is you've got this deck back here and the link system from my sea will actually work on this. So any link accessory will be able to be swapped between between the sea -Doo, this, you can even put them on like ski -Doo's. Uh, you can put them on the switch boats, the pontoon boats that sea -Doo make. So it's very cool that you can sort of swap stuff between the different platforms. And imagine this, like you wanna go out for a whole day, you wanna carry some extra fuel, maybe take an ice chest, some drinks, some food, whatever. And I would love to put a roof rack with a, uh, a tent on the top, a roof tent. I think that would be killer. Because imagine coming out here, cruising around, and then just setting up tent, making a campfire, and just spending the evening somewhere like this, where, honestly, a lot of the places that I've been with this on this trip, you wouldn't be able to get a truck. That you know, These are just so light and nimble and able to just, like, billy goat their way around that you can get further and deeper into places where, you know, my big old truck probably wouldn't make it, or at least it wouldn't be pleasant. With this, you can get they're fast, you can get there comfortably, and if I can bring all my stuff with me, then essentially it would just be like an extension of my sea camping stuff, right? I could just throw it on this instead. So yeah, I can see one of these in my future for sure. I, I've always loved them, but having this one for the whole weekend to just do with as I please has really kind of sealed the deal for me. So uh, yeah, stay tuned to the channel because um, I think there might be some Can-Am adventures. There might be some can <laughs> All right, so let's take a look around this crazy camera car here. So this is uh, a Bronco. Is this the Raptor or yep. did you build this thing up? So it started its life as a 21 Badlands Sasquatch Bronco. And then we put the APG Lawn Travel. So it widens the whole track width, three and a half inches at each side. So it's, it's actually eight inches wider overall with the offset of the wheel. And it allows us to run 37s and have actually more suspension travel than the Raptors have. And it's... Um, it's pretty cool because it's tunable. So as you're, you're going off-road, you can make it softer or harder, depending on what type of terrain you're going. And that's really important for us because of what we do. Uh, <laughs> this is you, crazy. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see. So this is called a motor crane radical. So it's like a camera car. And it, this whole arm stabilizes this camera package here. And this gimbal allows us to control where it looks. So one guy sits in the car, controls where the camera looks. One guy controls the focus. Another guy controls where the arm goes. And then I, I focus on driving and making sure we don't get in an accident. Um, but yeah, that's basically the whole gist of it. And I'll, I'll take you around this way. Inside, we've got the command center. It's a little messy, but um, we use a radio to communicate with whatever car we're filming. And then we also have these headset intercoms. So whenever it's loud, we can put this down. We can talk to each other and we're in each other's ears. In the back seat, we run another monitor so they can see what the camera is recording. And then they use this joystick. It's kind of like playing a video game. You just control where the camera is going to look. And that's how we pretty much get the shots. A setup like this, what does it weigh? What extra weight does it add to the car? Yeah, so uh, we actually... <laughs> so, so there are these guys drag racing quad bikes down here. And they are so loud, like ridiculous. It's a lot of extra weight. This, this rack is really cool. I love it. It's good for putting your accessories. But we actually don't use it for the motor crane because it's so heavy. If you want to look in here... There's, we put a steel structure. Oh so my it goodness. Custom built. It's almost like a roll cage that wow. it attaches to the roll cage. Uh, but overall, it's close to 400 pounds extra. So you, you feel it when it's up there. It's a little more yeah, tippy. I'm sure. But you got to be just mindful as you drive that you don't 
send it too hard and tip it over. That's so cool. This is awesome. The yeah. shots that you were getting, like I, I was following, so I was in the can am behind. Yeah. I was just watching the camera, just like yeah. right out there in the front. It looked awesome. How do people find you on Instagram? So we're on Instagram, vision.creative.co. All right, thank you, mate. Appreciate cool, you. Man. Thank you. Hi. Hi, you having a nice time? Hi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, the belly webs. Is that the spot? We are back at home base and uh, I had to come back and re-up my energy levels because I was starting to flag, needed to take some more drugs and yeah, make some food. So we're cooking up a little treat here. So we've got these little baby potatoes, roasted and ready. Baby sunrise potatoes with rosemary and garlic. Mmm, -mm, yummy yum. And then I think I'm probably just gonna throw on a burger. I might throw on a little sausage as well, who knows? But a nice little salad. That'll go down a treat. Well, I'm not sure I'm gonna eat all of this, but <laughs> I've made it. So, nice little view here. Can I'm sitting pretty. That's good. I do love simple cooking, like just throwing everything in one pan and just kind of hoping it turns out right. I like to call it rustic, because there's definitely some, you know, some charred bits on there, but it's it's rustic, it's, it's nice. Uh, also, who else likes mayo with basically everything well I did it and I'm so full and now I'm gonna go and lay down and take a nap because <laughs> I'm so beat oh man this is the worst weekend to feel like this because I would love to just be out ripping the can-am and doing all sorts of fun things still but you got to take a rest when you need it and when your body tells you and I've been non-stop for the last Oh God, probably two months now, and it's not gonna let up anytime soon. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go get a little hour of shut eye. Hopefully they'll recharge my batteries a little bit, and then we'll get back out later because I wanna go down to Chocolate Thunder and Backdoor when it gets dark to see the craziness that goes on down there. So here's the view from the bedroom. Very nice, very spacious, very open. Got my little outside view there. Oh, this is gorgeous. A little bit of breeze coming in from the skylight. All right, guys, I will be back in, I don't know, maybe an hour. Bye. I have awakened from my slumber and I feel this much better than I did before, which is good because anything better than how I felt before is a good thing. Anyway, look, this is where I am. This is just absolutely insane out here. And I figured I haven't given you a tour yet of the camper and all the setup that I've got. So let's get into that because then I've got to move it. I'm actually going to take it back down towards Hammertown, which is about five miles that way through the desert, where I can go and set up a little bit close to the exit because tomorrow morning I have to be out of here at the crack of dawn and I don't want to sit in a whole line of traffic getting out or have to try and get through all this off-road stuff first thing in the morning when I'm all bleary-eyed. Anyway, let me show you why I've been staying in this weekend. So here is the setup. We have Ford F350. This is the dual axle, so as you can see, we have two tires on each side in the back, which means that it can take extra payload because it has this enormous Lance camper. So this is the 975 model. So I believe there is one bigger than this that has two slide outs rather than just this one, but this one has the single slide out and the MSRP is about $82,000. So it is not cheap, but oh my goodness, is it sexy. Uh, so as you can see, it has a full cab over here. This poor F350 is really being put to work, but honestly, you couldn't even tell that I was towing anything. It is so 
well made for this kind of stuff, for hauling this much weight. It is honestly exceptional. Uh, we've got the Starlink there, thanks to Brandon. That has been a game changer. First time I've used Starlink, and out here where there is absolutely no service whatsoever, this has kept me in contact with people and has just been a game changer. So if you ever wondered about Starlink, do it. It's very, very good. Coming around to the back, We've got a widow wadder, so you could get up on the roof if you wanted to. We've got the generator running, that's giving us power to run the Starlink, because this is a 110, uh, so this actually munches a decent amount of power, so the uh, generator is running for that. And uh, as we step inside here, this is the main living area, so let me turn on some lights. Uh, where are we? Here. So a little pan around for you, so this here, like I said, you've got the little dinette set up. This goes down and turns into a bed if you want it. Uh, really nice that you've got this dual aspect here. So I've been sat here having my meals and it's lovely to be able to see outside. Look at all of this. I've got my little charging station back there as well, plugged into the wall. Um, so that's doing its thing. And then yeah, as we scan across, we've got fridge, freezer, TV, bathrooms in there, bedrooms back there, and then kitchen, tons of storage. It's got these cool drawers that open out like this, which is uh, kind of a neat idea. Um, and yeah, just absolutely loads of storage for all my stuff. Snacks and tea bags, and that's my uh, kitchen stuff. Uh, microwave up there, uh, I have the Starlink plugged in to this one up here, which is where the microwave plugs in. But again, tons of space for pots and pans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's got a three burner propane uh, oven and stove, which is really nice. Lovely big sink, so tons of room. And this has got the whole two settings thing. All of your controls are up here entertainment uh, this one here is your uh, propane uh, furnace so your heater and then also your hot water heater this tells me all of my stuff so my batteries are full my black water is basically empty my fresh water I have a little bit left and my gray water I have oh does that mean yeah okay so the gray water is almost full so we need to uh, empty that out fairly soon uh, here's your generator up here more switches for awnings and stuff, and more down there as well, and that's a little slide out bin. So moving back, really nice sized fridge freezer. Again, uh, I think this runs on propane and electric. Um, so that's very nice that uh, you've got all of that space. Um, and then the freezer is a nice size as well. And then on this side, we have the bathroom. Oh, here's the TV as well, by the way, and more storage should you need it. Uh, and then in here, we turn this on. Here is the bathroom. So nice little vent fan for when you do a stinky poo. And then this is your toilet. Nice full size one. It's not like a, a little tiny thing you've got to try and balance on. So that's very nice as well. And then the same for the shower. Nice big shower in here. Um, there's your shower head and uh, a little like step thing. So if you want to sit down and uh, shower, then you can. Um, nice hardware, black finish, very cool. I don't really know what else to say. It's a very nice bathroom. It's nice to be able to have a shower and not have to be sat over the toilet because a lot of these, this would be the size of the bathroom right here. And so the toilet would be there and the shower head would be up there, which is fine if you're trying to save space. But for me, I like the fact that you've got both separate. And moving on to where the magic happens. So back here, you have a queen size bed. Uh, you've got storage on either side of the bed over there. Two windows as well, plus this skylight, which is awesome for watching the stars at night. And then you've got a closet on that side uh, to hang your clothes. And on this side, a cupboard with some shelves for other goodies. Um, but yeah, very, very comfy back here. Lots of space. It's just a really inviting place when you're lying in bed and you look back out this way. Everything feels nice and open and just a very, very nice nice place to be. You've got your two lights over there that you can turn on as well, but I don't want to crawl on here to do it. So you get the gist, but yeah, I absolutely love the bedroom in this. Uh, it's huge. There's so much space back there. Obviously it's just been me sleeping in here, but you could very, very comfortably sleep two people without a problem and you would have a great night's sleep. Oh, and just a disclaimer, because I know there'll be people in the comments going, oh, this is just an advert for Lance. It isn't, I'm not being paid to say this. If it didn't work, if there's stuff I didn't like, I would tell you there genuinely isn't. Like I've really, really enjoyed staying in this. I'm not being paid. Yes, they lent it to me for free for the weekend, but that's it. They didn't tell me that I had to say anything or didn't have to say anything. So this is a completely unbiased review and I'm very grateful to Lance for letting me do this but if there was something that I didn't like about it trust me I'd tell you easy as that
So yeah, as you can see, once everything's slid in, there is no living in here, and there's certainly no sleeping, unless you're very, very skinny and very athletic, and you can just, boom, post yourself through that little gap. And there we go, as easy as that. It's so simple to load this thing. I think I need a flat trailer too. <laughs> oh God, all of these things. 2024 is gonna get expensive, I can tell. This will take you to places and give you smiles like you would never believe. It is getting crazy out here. So the races have now all finished and this is the final night. So everyone is going ham. There are so many fireworks going off and people ripping up and down that back there. You might be able to see it up on the hill. That's chocolate thunder. So that's where we're gonna go now because I have a feeling he'll be getting pretty crazy up there now that the general public are allowed back on the course. are going to basically sit here for probably the next two and a half hours or so or i guess just over two hours waiting for finishers here to get into town but while we do that we're just going to play you some highlights of an amazing day of racing all right i am here with you sound like you are an animal out there tell me and your friends seem to agree. And he still follows through every year to provide this for everybody out here. It's amazing. So it sounds like there's actually a rookie program oh, that's been going on. This really? is year two of it. There is a shout out to the highest finishing rookie per class. <laughs> this year for our 4,400. I was just starting to talk and I saw him light that thing up. literally 10 feet from me. <laughs> they shit my pants. Look, there's embers over here. Never mind, she's like, Holy she's moly. Like, so I think there's still some races out on track, but it looks like they're here. just about to open up Bro, Chocolate Thunder for all the way across anybody country. else. They've got green, certain parts of the track closed for safety, obviously. Have, still races race. out there. The but uh, yeah, and I think Chocolate Thunder is about to go down. I just fell over trying to film. That was fun. Alrighty, well, two cars got stuck. Nothing much was going on. So I think it might be time to pack up. That was cool. Look how crazy that looks. It's like a city. Uh oh. You roll over a rock. Yep. Yeah, don't drive over that, buddy. So you guys just gonna leave that in the middle? Huh. Cool. Tell you what, they don't make them smart and pretty. It is 
is absolute bloody carnage. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. But I'm also tired, so now I think I want to go home. Home sweet home. Look what it is. It's okay truck. Out of the way, Jeep. Hey, look at him. So as you can see, I'm no longer in Hammertown. I am actually at the Lazy G Ranch, which is the home of Cali Ride Off-Road, which is the sister company to Jet Ski to Catalina. And this is Brian. This is the man behind all of it. Uh, and so basically, this is where I rented that can from for the weekend. And as you can see, they've got a couple here. Um, but like the Jet Ski to Catalina trips where you can go and you can ride from Long Beach to Catalina, they're now doing these off-road excursions, which are self-guided, you said now. Self-guided. So you just basically get put in one of these, there's an iPad in the dash, and you just go off and basically do all the stuff that I just did. 100%. Yep. Wow, that's so cool. And how many cars have you got? 10. I have 10 cars here. First year, we're getting started. Yeah. That's so, so What? Where are, like, can we just take a yeah. look? This is... Uh, yeah. Like an old saloon, Wild West Town. What like yep. what is this? So we're based at the Lazy G. So we have our Canon offered experience here, where you can come in, spend a few hours with us, go drive. But if you want an all night overnight experience, yep. you can come stay here. This is a full Airbnb, so you can rent it by the room, uh -huh. or you can rent the entire town. Bring all your family and friends here. Have a campfire in the middle. No way. And it's like doing a circle of RVs, but you're gonna have it right here in the middle of a town. I spy with my little eye something that I was so excited to see yeah. actually in action at Hammers. That's the new uh, Maverick R, isn't it? Is it the new Maverick R. That's yeah, cool. So can you have, rent those here? We are. We are. The, new, the new Maverick R will be for rent as part of Cali Ride Off Road. So oh we are. Yeah. So if you want to come drive it you can come drive it here. Let me know in the comments if you think I should come back and spend a night here at the Lazy G, uh, Lazy G Ranch. Ranch. I, I'm, my brain is fried, guys. I'm so sorry. I've been sick this whole weekend and I am about to lose the plot. Um, but yes, if you think that I should come back and do some more four-wheeling in one of these and come stay at this place, then let me know in the comments below. And also, if you want to come and do it yourself, then you guys are open for business and ready to go, right? CaliRide.com. CaliRide.com. All the links will be in the description below. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode and what I've gone and done out there and you would like to do it for yourself, but hopefully a little bit quieter because obviously you can go ride all of that same stuff, but when King of the Hammers isn't on, so you get it all to yourself, then yeah, check the links in the description below. But mate, thank you so awesome. much. Thank you. Thank you for lending me that for the weekend. Yeah. And uh, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, give me a follow, do all the things. But most importantly, remember, until next time, don't know anything I wouldn't do. See ya.